Thousands of Russians have been protesting their country's invasion of Ukraine, and more than 1,700 of them across 54 Russian cities were detained today by police. Mid Michigan now anchor Stephanie Parkinson spoke with a U of M professor and former U.S. ambassador tonight. What does this say about how the Russians feel about their leader invading another sovereign nation? You know, it's a great question tonight, Dave, and it's definitely different from the early 1990s when the USSR broke apart. I spoke with Melvin Levitsky tonight, and he's now a professor at U of M, but he's also a former U.S. ambassador who early in his career served as a political officer at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. Levitsky pointed out key differences of how Russia operates today that he says makes it more difficult for Putin to just arbitrarily do whatever he wants with no repercussions. You know, it's one of those transition periods where you have a very strong autocratic government, but it's not a totalitarian government in terms of controlling everything that goes on. There's private enterprise now, which didn't exist in the Soviet period, private business, there's uh, dissidents in this, in this, well, I would say not dissidents, but opposition. Now, it's that opposition which we've seen in the streets of Moscow and other Russian cities where people have protested. Now, of the 1,700 arrested that Dave mentioned by police in Russia today, nearly 1,000 were in Moscow. It will be confirmed as the next Supreme Court justice, according to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Schumer says Judge Brown Jackson has exceptional qualifications and a record of even-handedness. Once President Biden sends her nomination to the Senate, Schumer says Democrats will work on a fair and expeditious confirmation process. Judge Jackson has an impeccable record as a judge and in her public service. She's been confirmed by the United States Senate on a bipartisan basis three times. Schumer hopes the he, she received significant Republican support, but Senate Judiciary Thank Committee member much. Lindsey Graham isn't Mr. happy President. about the pick. Graham tweeting in part, the radical left has won President Biden over yet again. He wanted Biden to nominate South Carolina Judge Michelle Childs. Locally, several Democrats have released statements on Biden selecting Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. Senator Debbie Stabenow saying that J Judge Jackson is an extraordinary nominee. Well, Senator Gary Peters applauded Biden for nominating Judge Jackson who said he's well qualified. Governor Gretchen Whitmer said her experiences will serve Michiganders well. As of now, mid-Michigan Republican delegation have not commented on the nominee. Two of these houses have been taken down. Demolition is now underway on the third. The Genesee County Land Bank and the city, and of course, neighbors close to the blighted area are anxiously awaiting the removal of this last one, which I'm told is happening very soon. Finally, the saga that has been this issue on Missouri will actually be complete. The removal of these properties was a long-awaited process. Freeman tells me a family also lived in one of these homes while the trash was piled high outside. He tells me the eviction process took longer than expected because of the backups in the court, and in that time, the house was set on fire. It took a problem that was bad and made it exponentially worse. Fast forward seven months later, the ball is finally rolling with the help of some additional funding. On average, a demo like this would cost roughly $15,000. Now, one might think that sounds like, you know, that's pretty expensive, but uh, we are under very strict uh, regulations with the state of Michigan for environmental compliance. And people who live in this neighborhood couldn't be happier. I feel like something actually is being done. And it's not just me or my brother. It's, I mean, it's, it's got to mean something to the other people around here, too. I mean, we're all infected by it. These homes had asbestos, lead, and other hazardous materials inside, according to Freeman, which means abatement had to be done for safety reasons. Mary Neely tells me this is just the beginning of a long process in Flint's restoration process alongside the Genesee County Land Bank. It's the start of something wonderful. Uh, uh, long overdue. We went into a partnership to develop the springboard. Now we have a, a, a foundation in which we can uh, continue the process of working through this. For me, I think I'm as emotional as probably any of the other neighborhood residents, knowing that, you know, for once they can breathe. They, that they feel safe and secure and they live in a place that's healthy for children and for family members and a place they can be proud of. Now, Freeman says the third blighted home on Missouri Street is set to come down next week as soon as they get the go ahead from Consumers Energy. Now, when it comes to other blighted 
properties in the city, both Freeman and Mayor Neely say there are efforts underway to try and get rid of them. And Neely says there's a $2,000 reward for anyone who reports dumping of trash in the city.